Good evening, good evening. How are you? Greeting you in your time zone. Good morning, good night. It's uh, 13, 13, 14, 1, 14 p.m. Pacific time here in my uh, location. It is uh, 1, 14 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Good evening. How are you? How are you? Welcome to our broadcast today. And uh, today we are talking about the African child. Uh, that is the main topic, but we'll talk about uh, other things as well. So welcome. Join in. Join in. Let me just share in my groups and then we'll get started in a little bit. Good evening. Let me just share in my groups. Alice Banda, how are you? Joan, how are you? Kuhen, how are you? We are here. Welcome. If you are new on this page, we are um, a page. We are a human rights page where we talk about anything and everything that uh, affects humanity, Ubuntu to the world. Mainly, we are concerned about uh, improving the quality of lives, especially for the people of Africa. Yes. So we'll talk about many things that affect um, especially Africans and many other peoples of the world. So today, the topic we are focusing on today is the African child. And we'll look at uh, the many things that affect the African child. So join in, share with people. We'll get started in a little bit. You know, uh, African child, the plight of an African child is a very serious one. You know, African child is almost like an endangered species because of the many factors which affect a child from the time they are born up to the time they become a young adult. Even the circumstances of having an African child are very dangerous. So we'll, we'll look at the plight of an African child and uh, I want you to uh, join in, share. Let's grow this page. Africa, we experience the same problems. We, we, in every, whether you are from North Africa, South Africa, East Africa, we are experiencing the same problems. We as women experience the same problem. So we are here, guys. Um, this is Queen Pumi. If you don't know me, the original page is Ubuntu Forum. And we had focused mainly on uh, uh, giving checks and balances. This page originally, when it started, it was a political page based on a uh, issuing checks and balances it started in a before we started this page actually in a pf time in 2020 that's when this page was started so i started this page to offer checks and balances to the then uh, government which was pf and i helped campaign to usher in the upnd so to current date we are here we are offering checks and balances but we are rebranding uh, the page to capture the entire Africa because all of Zambians' problems affect the entire Africa. So we would like to expand our reach and grow our page because, as you know, the current political situation in Zambia, uh, they are trying to pass a law to stop people, independent broadcasters, from making um, any kind of comment, political comment, either Facebook post, audio, video, on all the channels. There's a bill in parliament right now. They are trying to ban people from broad talking about anything political without a license. So they were requiring, they want to require independent broadcasters such as myself to actually have a license to speak about politics. And I just want to say that, uh, if this goes ahead and happens, 
if they actually pass this law, it will be an infringement of human rights. Article number 19. Yes, if the government of Zambia actually passes this law to prohibit, um, to curtail the freedom of speech, it will be a direct violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Act number 19. Because uh, Facebook is an international uh, platform and all the other social media platforms are international platforms. If a government comes in and starts requiring a license to speak on political matters, that is a violation of the laws, of the international law. It might become law in Zambia. They might be successful in implementing this law in Zambia, but it will be a violation of international laws. And in future, we might see all the people who are responsible for enacting this law to be actually subject to, to legal prosecution. So it is a very serious thing what is happening in Zambia, uh, taking away people's freedom of uh, opinions, discussion and association is actually a serious violation of human rights. So I would myself, I am a certified human rights consultant and I speak here as a professional person. I am not just somebody who is just talking because I want to talk. I know I want to talk, but I am a professional person. And as a certified human uh, rights consultant, I am protected. We have laws that protect uh, professional people and uh, Every government must respect those laws. Yes. So I know we are, we, it's an uphill battle, guys. It's an uphill. So I just want to assure everybody that uh, there are ways to communicate. Even if this law they are trying to pass, this law they are trying to pass, if they enact it, it will be a violation. These people will be subject to, uh, to to court they will be sued they will be sued so i just want to say that these people who are passing these laws it is going to be a crime it might pass through now under the current leadership but it is a violation of human rights and then in zambians also people in zambia consider getting connecting to the internet via vpn virtual networks yes so you bypass the local networks in zambia and then you can connect to the internet via uh, the, the the virtual networks mama good to see you if you want to join i can add you but we are here guys today we are talking about the girl child and uh, like i said we are rebranding this page we want to talk about all the problems that affect uh, developing countries especially in africa and today we are talking about the the african child yes Bakawe, how are you we are talking about the african child and uh i want to say that i i chose the african child because an african child is like an endangered species this is the beginning of life but uh an african child from the time the, just the circumstances of having an African child is very difficult. You know, if you go to the hospital, you know, there are no facilities, there is no water. If you have an emergency, there is no theater to operate on you. Uh, when you are in your last trimester as a mother, they tell you to bring uh, syringes and all the linen to have your baby in labor. So it's very difficult, guys, to have a baby in Africa. But uh, before we talk about the challenges, I want to talk about how blessed children who are born in other countries are. Myself, um, as a mother, I had all my children in Africa. I was lucky to have my first child at a mine hospital, so the experience was better. But uh, when I went to my other children, I had them in a government, a public hospital, it was a nightmare, you know, you just pray to say, 
you everything will go fine and you go uh, you you go home with your baby so we are talking about the african child but before we talk about the african child let us talk about um uh, children in a, in, in a Western world. So I am a mother and all my children are here with me and all my children, they went to a public high school here in the United States. So all my children, they went to elementary school and high school, which what you call a uh, primary school and secondary school. So my children, they went to primary school and secondary school here in the United States otherwise elementary and high school. And uh, I want to say that, oh my God, it, it's something, you know, it's a night and day is what I want to say. Like your children going to school in Africa versus your children going to school in uh, the United States or in the West, it is night and day guys. It is night and day. Literary, literary. You know, you people, you are you are bragging about all oh, this free education. You don't know. You don't know what free education is. So let me talk about uh, the experience of uh, my children going to high school here. My children, they went to high school here in the United States uh, primary school, which is elementary. And now I have a grandson, so he went to all those, he went through the, all the systems, you know, going to school in uh, my grandson. I'll give an example of my grandson because he went to daycare. They have daycare. Now he's in primary school. And then uh, in after primary school, they have what they call after schools program. So the parents are working, they take care of the kids there. And then uh, high school, of course, elementary school, and then there's college, then there's universities. So guys, it is night and day. Now, the benefits of going to, uh, for example, there are many benefits like the access to education. Like all the teachers here, they are all highly qualified. And uh, to, 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 um, to teach in a high school, you actually need a bachelor's degree in a, in a, here at least in my state that i am so all teachers here they are highly qualified they have a bachelor's degree my mind has refused to add you i'm going to join on the other page it, it adds you so let me finish talking and then i'll, I'll restart the video and add you mama because i want you to comment but let me just give my take and then i'll add you on the other page it will allow it so we are talking about benefits in a developed country for children so when we say first of all we are talking about education the education standard here in the united states is very high the quality of education is very high especially in high school all the teachers in my state that i am all the teachers they have a bachelor's degree and then we are talking about education so all the teachers have bachelor's degrees in high school and then they, they is for, picture, for families who come from poor families, they have free meals, breakfast, snack, and lunch. So all the children here in the United States, they have free meals at school. And they give the free meals depending on your, the income of your family. So the families who make a lot of money, they don't qualify for the, for the free food program in the schools, but there is a cafeteria at each school. For example, if you are rich and you don't your child does not qualify, if you earn so much money, more than the poverty line, if your child, uh, for example, you didn't pack a lunch or they didn't have breakfast, you give them money and they can buy food in the cafeteria which is very cheap guys we are talking about what you are calling free education so i'm saying one the teachers here in the united states in high school they are all they all have bachelors in the state that i am i don't know about other states in primary school i think everyone needs an associate 
and above. You cannot get a grade 12 uh, dropout to teach in a school here. They are all highly educated because they know that education, you need highly qualified people to be teaching garbage in, garbage out. If you uh, uh, hire dropouts to teach your children, then what, what kind of children are you going to produce? So we are saying food is free for all those who, who make less money. They get, get all the free meals in the school, you know. There are full cafeterias there. Full, every school here has a full cafeteria from breakfast, snack, and lunch. Yes, they provide food and they provide transportation. So if you are in a certain school area, there are buses there. Again, if you don't make enough money, the transport will be free. If you make enough money, uh, then uh, you you can uh, your child can ride the school bus, but he can uh, ride it at a fee, very low, which is affordable. Or you can drop your child at school. And then healthcare is comprehensive. They have uh, hospitals, global standard hospitals. Nutrition also is maintained. So they actually inspect your kids to come to school, making sure they are eating and have a good environment at home. And uh, there are recreational facilities at school. There are extracurricular activities and uh, social services is there to inspect the children and make sure all the children are fine and they are coming from uh, good homes. And actually the social services people if they see that a child is coming to school looking sick or they were beaten, they come in and investigate and some families have had their children taken away from them. So that is that, guys. So we can see that uh, in Western countries, they really care for their children. In a public schools, they, they go above and beyond in providing for that. And then you also have other, the government also provides uh, allowances. Most of the Western countries, they provide allowances to families, like every child will get a child tax credit. Yes, so depending on your income, uh, you submit, uh, when you do your taxes, they look at how much you make. And uh, if you have, uh, if you make below a certain amount, they give you, a credit when you do your taxes or in some state, I think in California too, they started giving a credit. I don't know if it's quarterly, but they give money to parents to help support their kids. So this is what we are, we are advocating for a better world for, for our African children. So if our leaders can take some of these things and implement them in our countries there in Africa, so many countries, especially in Europe, they actually pay mothers to stay home and take care of their children. Yes. So if you are a mother, you are working, you have children, you quit your job, they'll pay you a minimum wage, maybe 600, 700 a month. And then they also pay you an allowance for the child. So some people, they just stay home and take care of their kids. If you have like three, four kids, there is no need for you to get a job. You can just stay home. The government will pay you uh, to take care of your kids' child support, and then they'll pay you an allowance for each kid. That money is supposed to help you support the kids, buy clothes, food, transport, entertainment, anything that they need. So we are talking about uh, uh, a child born in, uh, in uh, some of these developed countries, and that's why uh, on our page here, we are here fighting for these conditions to be brought to African kids because African kids come from a wealthy continent and African kids deserve to have these benefits that other kids have in other parts of the world, you know. So why can't a child in Asia, in Africa, in South America be accorded these same privileges? Actually, they are not privileges. They are basic human rights, you know. Children in Africa, South America, 
Africa and even in Asia are denied some of these things which children in, uh, in Western countries enjoy. So why can't our leaders implement these things? What is the difference? Why should, uh, uh, a ch why should uh, being born in Africa be a crime? Why should our children being born in Africa pay the price of having a harsh childhood, you know? We ask ourselves, like myself now, I ask myself to say, you know, there's nothing different from a child born in, a, in America and Africa. They are children, they are one and the same. But what is the difference is our leaders, our leaders in these countries do not put things in place to ensure that that our children in Africa, Asia, South America have these rights that other children are enjoying in Western countries. So we are here to advocate, let us unite as, as, a, as human beings wherever. Still, Mama Nala Mchita add, uh, let me just finish this live and then I'll add you on the other page, I'll restart. So we are just saying that um, children, who are born in the western countries they have more they have their basic rights it's not even a privilege they are accorded their rights that they need things that they need the basic needs are given to them and we have systems in place in these governments to ensure that kids have food quality education quality housing and any basic need a child born in the west will have those needs that's why you see People, they are, if, they, if, they, if they have American citizenship, they will get pregnant in Africa and fly over here to America or Europe and have their baby there. Because they want, once the baby is born in America or in Europe, then that child will have privileges there than a child born in Africa. So we are saying, you know, we as a human beings, as mothers, we are here to advocate that. The same rights that are accorded to these children in the West, they should be accorded to the children in, in, uh, uh, in Africa, in Asia, and many parts of the world. So I am switching over to my other channel, guys. Uh, follow me to African uh, Journey page so I can add my Machika Monica. Otherwise, thank you so much. We continue the discussion there. Thank you invite people we are here we are talking about africa in general so that we can grow our page there are seven billion people on earth so as if we talk about zambia only we are limiting our coverage and also we are limiting the growth of this page so we are just uh, changing our names and rebranding and uh, expanding the our scope of reach so we talk about matters that that affects everyone in the world and not only specify on zambia so we can grow our page so i'll see you on the other page thank you